All right, this is a, another really good 12 volt lead acid battery charger. And how it works, it does not use a transformer. It uses a capacitor, one of these large run capacitors. This one right here is 370 volt. That's the rating of it up to 370. And this is 100 microfarads, 100 UF. And this will yield roughly 5 amps of current charging into your lead acid battery. Now, if you want to go 200, which is no problem, you could parallel two of these together, and you could have 200, and then you would just have to increase the, the rating of your rectifier and the rating of this relay, which is currently 5, and then you could have 10 amps. Now, I'm explaining what I did. I, I came up with this. I was just playing around. All right, you have 120 volts going in. This goes to your battery. Now, the, the problem with these kind of chargers is when you plug them in, if these aren't connected to the battery, the voltage will rise up to 160 volts DC. And you don't want to touch this, obviously, when, it's, when that happens. So I had to make this fairly safe to use. And what I did, this is the design. Plug that in. The hot side goes into a uh, 7 or a 10 amp fuse. The other side of the fuse ties into one side of the capacitor and across both terminals there's a resistor right here. It's a bleed resistor. That's 360,000 ohms and what happens when you unplug this the capacitor will discharge at a decent rate to get rid of the high voltage. The other side of the capacitor flows into the rectifier. In this case, it's a 5 amp, well actually this is a 10 amp rectifier right here. And I just made this heat sink to dissipate a lot of the heat. This is the only part of the circuit that gets hot. So you want to make sure there's a, a suitable heat sink for this. Don't put too small because you'll end up frying your rectifier. Now once it goes into the rectifier, the other side of the rectifier and the alternating side goes to the neutral of this side. This will all be placed into a very small box with ventilation and I'll just have the power cord sticking out and the charging clamp sticking out. So this part of the circuit right now you understand. The output of the rectifier, the DC output, gets connected to this 200 volt capacitor here. It's I think 680 microfarads. So this is for smoothing the DC to make it really smooth. And in the process of smoothing the voltage also climbs in the conversion from AC to DC. Without this capacitor the DC voltage will remain probably 120, 125. As soon as you put this capacitor on after the rectifier it goes to 160. So this is putting 160 volts DC output. Now you'll see down here there's a, a neon lamp. The purpose of that neon lamp is to let you know if there's any dangerous voltage at these clamps. Now the other part of the circuit which is the safety factor of the circuit, you'll notice that down here, poor lighting, but there's a 1 microfarad 250 volt poly capacitor which is connected to the other side of the capacitor. Now this side is connected to the fuse coming in. The other side goes out into the rectifier. Now at the point where the rectifier ties into the capacitor, there's another capacitor down there. That's the one microfarad. That feeds into another bridge rectifier, which I made out of a bunch of 1N4005 diodes and that goes into a 250 volt electrolytic capacitor for smoothing and from there there is a diode a 1N4007 which goes across the coil contacts of the relay and basically you have the, the uh, positive feed from this capacitor 
going to the coil and the other side of the coil connects to this resistor which is a 680 ohm 1 watt and goes to the negative of this side. The way this works, when you plug this in, if this is not connected, you do not want to have this live with 160 volts. So what's going to happen, the voltage is going to climb because it's not being lowered with the load of the battery. And the, as the voltage climbs, and because the voltage is cl has climbed, the current will now flow through this capacitor, allowing roughly 50 milliamps of current flow into this bridge rectifier and into this capacitor for smoothing. The capacitor then connects to the relay coil and the other side of the relay coil goes to this 1 watt 680 ohm resistor to the negative side of the capacitor which causes this relay to activate causing the circuit to open not allowing current and dangerous voltage to reach these clamps. Now in order to reset the circuit you would have to disconnect power, connect the clamps to the battery, the, to the load, alright? Then you plug this in. Now the relay will not trigger because the voltage has dropped so much to charge the battery. Now the current cannot flow through the capacitor to trigger the relay which will open the circuit. So now you're good, so now you're charging. Now with this particular circuit I'm probably going to add on a little battery monitor to let me know when the voltage is where I need it but you really don't have to. You can monitor the voltage with a, a DMM so it's really not a big deal. So this is this is a fairly safe capacitive 12 volt charging circuit. A lot of them are not safe because you have the risk of the capacitors and the, the high voltage from the clamps. But the way this one I designed it, it, it's very safe. Now, if this isn't connected to anything and you plug this in, you're going to see a super, super quick flash of this neon lamp indicating that voltage was present on these clamps for a split second. So when this is plugged in, you could touch these together and nothing's going to happen. When you unplug this, this capacitor is going to be automatically going to start to bleed down. The neon lamp will come on indicating that there is high voltage at these clamps. But within about six seconds, the voltage is bled off of these clamps and then you could just do that and there's no problem. So the only hazard time you have would be if you plug this in with nothing attached and then when you unplugged it from the wall there's a few seconds that these remain live before they disconnect other than that there's really no other risk of electric shock charges extremely well it puts out just about five five amps make sure you use a run capacitor and not a start the run capacitors have oil in them they're designed to handle current for prolonged periods of time and a start capacitor is not. You run the uh, likelihood of exploding the start capacitor if you use it. Because it will generate heat, the plates will touch and then it will go bang and it'll, the can will blow. So make sure it's a run capacitor. If you don't have a 100 and you have two or three 25 microfarad ones laying around, just parallel them up and then you'll get what you need. The more you connect, the more current you will get. Just remember to increase the values of your rectifier and the rating of the relay. Now for a quick demonstration. Alright, this is a brief demo. 12.89 on a nice size marine battery. There's the circuit. I'm going to plug it in and I'll show you how fast it climbs. It climbs very quickly. This 
will be 13 and a half in no time. Pretty neat using a charger without a transformer. When you're done, just reach over and unplug. That's it.